everybody. How you doing? All right, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Almost sold out the front row. Good for the ego. That's... Can't ask for much more than that. I don't know. People get so nervous about sitting up front at comedy shows. I don't know why. You're in no danger. You may not know this about comedians if you miss the Oscars, but we don't hit back. So, swing away. Oh man, Sarasota, Florida, man, it is great to be here. I live in San Francisco, that's where I do most of my comedy, and I really wanted my special to go well, so I thought it would get as far away geographically as I could from <laughs> San Francisco. I don't know if any of you have ever tried doing stand-up comedy in the most triggered city on the planet, but uh, yeah, it's kind of tough. I, and listen, it, San Francisco, it's fine, but like the political landscape of that place, it's a whole city of people walking around all day, just like, I don't have any bad thoughts ever. Like, <laughs> no, not me. I am totally progressive, forward thinking all the way. That, that city, by the way, I was stepping over homeless people in that joke. That city. <laughs> oh, all right. They don't like that one back home. <laughs> fix the problem, I'll fix the joke. How about that? And I don't want to come off like I'm not a progressive guy. I like to think I am. That, that surprises a lot of audiences because I don't look like a very socially conscious guy. I look like I tried to invade the Capitol two years ago. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. And that's important to note. It's okay, I see it too, resting insurrection face. There's nothing I, there's nothing I can do. You know, I think I look okay now, but by God, you put a camel hat on me, it's like, ah, oh, there's a proud boy right there. We, we got him pegged. I'm not kidding you, January 6, 2021, I got more calls and texts than I've ever gotten in my entire life. All my family and friends were like, where are y'all? I was like, not fucking Washington, all right? <laughs> was not me. All right, good looking crowd. Where, where, where are my couples at? Couples in the crowd, make some noise. <laughs> nice, awesome, you two together? Wonder how long you guys been together? 12 years, all right, I can come back if you're not sure, okay. <laughs> Yeah, all right, do, do the math. I mean, that, that, that's not that long ago, man. That's 2010. You should, yeah, all right, that's fine. What, 14? All right, it's fine. I have enough information to move on. That's good. <laughs> we don't need to fact check this. But you look happy. Love to see happy couples at shows. I asked some, I asked some married couple a few weeks ago at a show. I was like, oh, sir, how long have you been, have you been married? And the guy was like, oh. Long time, man, long time. I don't even remember anymore. And I was like, all right, well, you're kind of a bummer. And I asked his wife, I was like, ma'am, how long have you been married? She was like, two years. I was like, yo, okay. <laughs> a little early to get jaded there, sir. I, uh, I'm married myself, and uh, it's great. My wife and I, we fight like any couple, I guess. You know, my wife, she mostly gets mad at me because uh, she says I don't take things seriously enough. Like, uh, one example, about a month ago, I was on the road doing shows, and she's home alone very late, and she sends me a text, and it said, I heard a weird noise outside. Now, I was just trying to be funny, guys. I was just trying to make her laugh. I texted back, I was like, well, that guy assured me you'd never hear him coming. <laughs> And that one earned some paragraphs, man. <laughs> I don't know, fellas, you ever, you ever see those three dots below the text? You're like, oh shit, shouldn't have said that last part. Okay, incoming. <laughs> We're gonna pop this in airplane mode, let it cool on the windowsill. Or uh, when, whenever my wife gets into an Uber alone, she'll text me her route. She'll text me her route, and I guess I'm supposed to open the app and I can follow along so that in case things go astray, I can watch a dot get kidnapped, just. <laughs> I, I, 
asked her, I was like, honey, what do you, how am I supposed to help? What do you want me to, you want me to call Uber? Just ring up the corporate line like, hey guys, give her back. That's mine. But she got really mad. She was like, what am I supposed to do if he's a crazy person? And I was like, I, I don't know, hon. Try to crank out a one-star review as fast as you can. Let's see if we can save the next girl. If you got a better answer, I'm all ears. Please, let me, let me know. I love, uh, love going on dates with my wife. Couples, answer me this, couples. Uh, you guys, you ever go to a restaurant together and you don't say a word to each other the entire meal because you're too busy eavesdropping on everyone else at the restaurant? You guys do that? Dude, I think that's when you know you found the one, man. When you can just sit there like a couple of sponges for 90 minutes just absorbing all the ratchet shit going on around you, man. That's the best. Like, my wife and I, we get to the restaurant, we don't care. The host is like, oh, would you like inside or outside? I'm like, oh, doesn't matter. Can you put us next to the most volatile couple in the restaurant, please? I'm like, yeah, table for two, Hot Mess Express. Oh my gosh, one time, we got sat next to a couple and they were fighting over his activity on social media, which this is as good as it gets right here. So my wife and I were like, all right, buckle up. This one's gonna get bumpy. <laughs> So we settle in, the girl starts out. She was like, why don't you got any pictures of me on your social media? I was like, oh. It's a good start. That's a good start. What you gonna do, buddy? What you got? He came back, he was like, baby, baby, baby. Everyone who knows me in real life already knows you. I was like, oh. That was terrible. That's not a good answer. You're not getting out of this. And she came back, she was like, what about them little thotties on Instagram? I was like, oh! My wife was like, what the thotty? I don't know, we'll Google it in the car, shut up. <laughs> That's how that argument went the whole time. The guy was just on the ropes, but here's how that ends. That guy actually won the argument. This was like, are you guys ready for this? This was like the comeback of the century. Watching this guy, it was, it was like watching Tom Brady, man. Yeah, it was, yes. It was like, wow, he pulled out the W, but you know he's cheating. You know what I mean? It's like. That went better than I thought it would go in Florida, but. So here's how, here's how it went. So the girl, she got up to leave all pissed off and the guy was like, you better sit down. She was like, no, the hell with you, I'm leaving. He was like, you better sit down. She's like, no, I'm done, I'm gone. And then he said the last thing in the world that I ever would have expected. He looked at her, he was like, you better sit your ass down or I ain't taking you to Cold Stone. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I, it worked. She, sat, she was scowling, but she sat down all pissed off and stuff. And I was like, Mike, what the hell are they putting in that ice cream, man? Like, you don't get that excited about gummy bears. They gotta be smashing like Percocet and gas coupons in there now. <laughs> I immediately asked the waiter, I was like, can we get the check right now? My wife was like, what's gotten into you? I was like, are you kidding? We gotta get over to the Cold Stone for the second act, man. <laughs> I'm fairly tall, you guys might have noticed that. Uh, I, uh, I'm six foot seven. Is, uh, okay, all right. Easy, easy. When, uh, when you're this tall, you got to, there's a couple drawbacks that you have to, number one is the, the questions. I get the tall people questions every day of my goddamn life. You, I've learned, you guys will interrupt me no matter what I'm doing. Like, I swear, I was at a wake one time, a wake, and the guy next to me was like, hey, did you, uh, did you play basketball? I was like, yeah, with him, do you mind? Like. trying to say goodbye to DeMarcus in peace? <laughs> Here's the other tough part about being tall is that I have a natural enemy in the wild and that is the short guy. Latin name can't reach his top shelfus. And <laughs> I tell you what, man, short guys, they, some of them, they just hate me on sight. And I don't know why. I want you to know, short guys, if you're here, I want you to know I am an ally, okay? I stand for those who don't look like they're standing themselves. I, 
I am on your side. But short guys, man, they get so mad. They'll get so confrontational. They'll get in my face. Well, not my face, but you know, they'll, they'll certainly get in my belly button. And uh, I remember one time a guy after a show, he was like, oh, you're six foot seven, I'm five foot nine. You think you're better than me? I was like, no, man, I don't think I'm better than you. I think God has made himself pretty clear, but uh, you know, I'm not here picking sides. And he wanted to fight me, for real, he wanted to fight me. He was like, why don't we go outside and settle this? I was like, why, so you can uppercut my balls? I don't, I don't think so, short stack, not happening. I'm just saying, you know, if you're short, be short, be proud, short kings, right? Yeah, there's the reassuring pats on your husband's shoulder I was looking for, yeah, there. Frank, let it go, who gives a shit what he has to say? I'm just saying, don't try to change who you are, short guys. And I say that because I saw an ad on Facebook the other day, and it, there's a company, and they make shoes just for short guys. And when I read that, I was like, okay, so shoes for short guys, what does that mean? Are those like the Velcro ones with Spider-Man on them, or like... <laughs> they light up in the heels, I haven't seen those in a while. But no, what they're, they're shoes that make a guy two and a half inches taller. They add two and a half inches to a guy's height. And listen, short guys, I get it. I totally get it. My nephew's potty training. We got him diapers that look like real shorts. Everyone wants to be a big boy. <laughs> I'm not here to gripe anybody. But I'm sorry, two and a half inches, man, that, that is dramatic. That's a big change. I mean, good luck to you, fellas. You put on these shoes, you meet a girl, you go back to her place, you kick off those Lady Gaga platforms you got on, and reality comes crashing back down. You're like, okay, baby, get ready for the ride of your life. You are, you are never gonna forget tonight. I'm gonna rock your world. Your bed's a little higher than I anticipated. <laughs> I don't know, fellas, can you do it? Can you keep a girl in the mood while you're saying, up, up, like I... I'm not so sure. If you can, good luck to you. All right. I feel like I'm about two short jokes away from getting the shit kicked out of me, so I'm gonna... <laughs> move on <laughs> heck let's get positive here let's get positive uh you know people always talk about all the negative things that happened in 2020 here's one cool thing that happened to me uh in 2020 i went out to las vegas and i actually won the 2020 world series of comedy which I was super oh thank you thanks very much thank you Thanks. You might be thinking, wow, World Series of Comedy, that sounds like a really big deal. And I thought so too, but here I am. So. <laughs> I'm a fucking special in Sarasota, Florida. Goddamn mayor is an unvaccinated alligator. Okay, all right, well. Let's do this. Kidding. you guys are cool you guys are great i will just say though i mean the world series of comedy it was great but yeah obviously it was kind of weird because yeah 2020 it was such a shit year for all of us so it just felt kind of uncomfortable to have such an amazing personal high happen while all this other bad stuff was going on in the world like i don't know guys like i, I feel like me and joe biden are like the only two people to win anything in 2020 you know <laughs> now look obviously i understand our victories are very different because you know <laughs> i won fair and square but uh <laughs> I'm shocked that went well in Florida. Okay. <laughs> That's a fun joke to take all over the country, because I'll tell you what, I tried that back in San Francisco. They don't care for that shit at all, man. They... But you know, I mean, you know what? Other side of the coin, a couple months ago, I did that joke in Wichita, Kansas. They carried me out on their shoulders. They, <laughs> they were like, this guy gets it. I was like, this guy is pandering. <laughs> I've got merch to sell. 
But the World Series, it was great. It was a huge honor. It's been a goal of mine since I got into comedy. So yeah, it was cool. I went out to Las Vegas. I was able to bring back a very nice trophy and COVID. I brought that back, guys. I, yeah, I caught COVID out in Vegas. I'll tell you what, man, my wife was so pissed. She was not happy with me at all. I thought she was kind of overreacting a little bit though. Cause I was like, you know what, honey? Of all the viruses I could have brought back from Vegas, you know, just. Maybe count your blessings a little bit. Uh, we, uh, we did just get married, my wife and I, a couple years ago, and uh, we recently had to have the kid conversation. We had to decide if we're gonna have children, and uh, we decided we're not. We're not gonna be having kids. And uh, we arrived at that conclusion for very different reasons. I asked my wife, I was like, why don't you wanna have kids? And she said, you know, I think with all the anger and violence in this messed up world, I don't think I wanna bring a baby into that. And I was like, that is a mature answer. And she was like, why don't you wanna have kids? And I was like, I hate T-ball. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's really where it starts and stops with me, guys. It's, it's not about healthcare, the state of the nation. I'm not spending my Saturday watching a five-year-old play a sport. He doesn't even know he's playing. Fuck that, all right? I hate T-ball. I hate it as a, a whole entity. Who invented this thing? Like, was someone watching a real baseball game one time and was like, we gotta slow this down. Like, this, this is moving way too fast. I got, I got dragged to my friend's kid's t-ball game recently, and I learned something. I learned that nobody actually wants to be at a t-ball game. Nobody. Like, I, I saw the kids. They're all sitting there picking dandelions. They're all have that look on their face like, where am I? Like, this isn't the house. Like, they, they don't want to be there. Parents, you're just scrolling through your phone. You don't want to be there. The coach, forget about him. He's just here because he got popped for a DUI. He's got to get back to the community, so. He's just logging hours. There's gotta be something better you can do to spend time with your kids. How about, why not, how about take them to Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah, do you guys know they're still open? Yeah, they made it through the pandemic. Who the fuck was ordering Chuck E. Cheese to go? For two years. But they made it, and they serve booze now. So parents, you can get liquored up. Cheese, pizza, and root beer, that's basically amphetamines for a five-year-old, so. <laughs> Essentially, the whole family can get loaded on a Saturday. That sounds a little bit better than watching a five-year-old swing a stick at a ball on another stick. Fuck that. <laughs> Because I'm serious, the kids don't do anything. They, they put three kids in the outfield. That is so mean, man. A ball hasn't been hit in the outfield in the history of T-ball. Hasn't happened once. I promise you, if you've got kids right now and they're in T-ball and they put them in the outfield, pull them out of sports right now, all right? They're not athletes, all right? Do they like to read? Maybe pick up a Kindle on the way home, hmm? Sports ain't for them. I'm not kidding you, the kid in left field, the game I was at, was turned around the entire game, just. <laughs> said better things to do. He didn't miss anything, obviously the ball didn't come near him, but I did think that was interesting because I remember reading a story one time where these parents were gonna sue a t-ball league because the league wasn't gonna let their son play because the kid was in a wheelchair. And the league got all defensive, they're like, well, we'd have to change all the rules. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You absolutely wouldn't. Just roll the little fucker out there. Set the parking brake. <laughs> Let him sit there and do nothing like everybody else. For crying out loud, at least we know he's gonna be facing the right direction.
I don't want to make it sound like it was all, the whole day was a waste of time. I did get to see one cool thing. I got to see a kid strike out. That made my year. That was the best thing I've ever seen. I didn't even know you can do that. I thought typically it's not like one, two, three strikes are out. I think they're supposed to give you as many cuts as you need, but I could tell after two swings, I was like, Poindexter ain't getting it, man. And then listen, I'll, act, I'll, I'll set the scene. This is exactly how it happened. So here's the T. Here's a tee, kid walks up to take his at bat, and uh, you know, he's five years old, so he's, you know, wearing that helmet that weighs more than his stupid body, so he's just bobbling up there, just. <laughs> Why is he wearing a helmet, first of all? Like, no one's throwing anything at him. He's in no danger. In fact, he's the one kid that doesn't need to be wearing a helmet, right? How about these kids in the infield lined up like the wrong end of a firing squad? <laughs> these parents won't let their kids out of a car seat till they hit puberty, but here it's like, oh, let's let this five-year-old who hasn't developed grip strength swing a metal bat in your general direction. <laughs> They're only baby teeth. <laughs> so the kid, he's up there, he's taking his at bat, and, uh, and you know how athletic five-year-olds are, right? So he's up there just He did that like eight or nine times, and they're like, all right, get out of here, kid. We gotta move the game along. So, kid strikes out, first recorded K in, in T-ball history. Uh, the child immediately bursts into tears. And at that point, I'm laughing harder than I've ever laughed in my entire life. I am dying laughing, like quietly. I'm trying to keep it to myself. I'm a grown man sitting in the bleachers watching the T-ball game. None of these kids are mine. I look suspicious enough, so. <laughs> I don't need to throw up any more alarms. As we were leaving, I heard one parent say to the other, she was like, you know, T-ball just teaches our children such important life lessons. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> I thought of one. I think, that, I think there's one lesson you can glean from T-ball, and that is, you know what, kid? Sometimes you get called into work on a Saturday. It happens, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you can do. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna have kids. But uh, parents in the, in, in the crowd, make some noise. Where are my parents at? <laughs> nice. You two have kids? How, how old's your kid? Uh, she will be 18 next month. Oh, okay. All right, that's, that's cool. Not so much a kid, but all right. I, you look 18. What, how did they, how'd you pull that off? Did you have her in like a seventh grade science fair project or something? Like, <laughs> baking soda volcano, I'll show you. Good for you. That's great. Respect to you parents. I, like I said, we're not gonna have kids, uh, but man, I, I learned a tough lesson about kids recently that I'll share with you. And parents, you probably know this backwards and front, but man, I learned when it comes to kids, like tiny children, man, you've gotta be very, very careful with what you say to those fucking things. <laughs> right? Dude, listen, am I wrong? They will take the most innocent thing you say, put it in their fucked up little data processor, and something totally different shoots out the other side. I almost got murdered because of some shit that a child misinterpreted. You guys wanna hear this story? This is, it's a wild story, and listen, it gets a little weird. I want you to keep that in mind, because when that happens, please remember, I didn't ask for any of this, all right? It's not my fault that kids are kinda stupid. So, we gotta go back about a year ago. I was booked to do some shows in Ohio and I hadn't booked my hotel yet because I was like, whatever, I'll book when I get there. It's Ohio, you know, something. <laughs> not the joke, but sure, fuck Ohio, why not? I... <laughs> There's a reason LeBron left twice. But I was wrong, I was wrong because I, I, when I got there, I could find no vacancy anywhere, no hotels. By the time I talked to my fifth hotel, the guy on the other end, he was like, oh hell man, you ain't gonna find a hotel within 100 miles of this place. I was like, what the hell man, what's going on? He was like, oh, there's a big NASCAR race this weekend. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He was like, you didn't know that? I 
I was like, no, I didn't know that. I graduated from college and my cousin and I are just friends. I don't follow NASCAR, guys. So he hung up. <laughs> He hung up and I was ass out. I had nowhere to go, but I got very lucky. These, uh, this friend of a friend I've never met before, they were gonna let me stay at their place. It was this guy, his wife, their five-year-old son, never met him before, but they were gonna let me stay at their place. Now you see how nutty you reacted to that at all? Cause you think that's normal? That's not, all right? It's not. I know that this part of the country, you pride yourself on like Southern and Midwest hospitality. I'm gonna tell you right now, cut that shit out. It's gonna get you fucking killed, all right? <laughs> I, listen, you guys, you could never do this back in California where I'm from. Like if someone was banging on my door in the dead of night with a knife hanging out of their liver, and they, and I don't, I don't know if that's where your liver is, but whatever. <laughs> ah, my liver, who cares, doesn't matter. But <laughs> someone's banging on my door and they're like, please, you gotta help me, I'm in so much pain, they're right behind me. I would be like, sir, you need to step back, I do not feel safe. because we're liberal and we care about people. <laughs> but man, like the South and Midwest, not you guys, you, no due diligence, because that guy was just like, oh, welcome to our home, very large stranger in the prime of your physical condition, come on in. <laughs> Let me show you around, this is the kitchen, we keep most of the sharp shit in here. <laughs> Here's the garage, you'll find all the rope, duct tape you need. So remember, it was a guy, his wife, and their five-year-old son. Uh, the kid's name was Aiden, because they fucking all are now. But... <laughs> Aiden got, like, weirdly attached to me right away. I don't know why. I got there very late. I just wanted to drop my bag and brush my teeth and go to sleep. So I was in the bathroom, brushing my teeth, and this five-year-old walks up to me. And again, this is the first thing he's ever said to me. But he walks up to me, and he goes, can you sleep in my bed with me tonight? <laughs> Which, yeah, okay. I mean, first of all, somewhere in America at that moment, Chris Hansen just shot out of bed. Like, <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Let's take a look at these chat logs. Did you guys get that? The To Catch a Predator? Oh, oh my God, real quick. Was that not the greatest show of all time? Oh my God, it was the best, man. Every episode was the same. Some 55-year-old trucker drives halfway across the country, thinks he's gonna hook up with an underage girl. He's so amped up, he doesn't even pick up on the red flags. He's like parking next to the Dateline van. <laughs> he's stepping over wires and sound equipment to get into the house. And when he gets there, is it the kid he's been chatting with? No, it's like a 19-year-old drama student posing as a decoy, always lures him in the same way, right? She's like, hey, come on in. I just spilled chocolate chip on my shirt. I had to change. Go ahead and take a seat next to camera three. I'll be right back. <laughs> and it worked every time. Anyway, back to the kid, back to the kid. So yeah, yeah, he's like, can you sleep in my bed with me tonight? Now listen. I don't know how to talk to kids, but I assume you're supposed to let them down easy. So I was like, oh, bud, you know what? That sounds like fun, but I don't think your parents would really go for that. And then Aiden said, well, that's okay. I'll just go ask him. And then runs upstairs. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna get put on a list. This is... This is real bad, because I thought, what am I gonna do? I thought, God, I can't stop him. The only thing worse than the question he's about to ask is if I like physically restrained him from getting to his parents. Like, no, no, this stays down here with us. <laughs> so I just dawdled up the stairs after him. I was like, well, let's see the hurricane. This should be interesting. <laughs> now, remember what I said about kids? Careful what you say to them, because the thing they repeat ain't what you told them, right? So anyway, a uh, kid uh, goes up to, to his parents' doorway. I'm just kind of hanging back in the hallway. And he goes up there and he goes, mom, mom, can he sleep in my bed with me tonight? Now the mom justifiably is like, what? No, absolutely not. And then the kid goes, but he says he wants to. <laughs> Which
Which I did not fucking say, Sarah. I, I did not say that shit. But I'll say this, it was at that moment I realized, I was like, shouldn't have, shouldn't have followed him upstairs. Should have stayed. Should have stayed downstairs. Cause you know what it looked like in that moment? Remember when you were a kid and your friend would ask their parents if you could stay the night and you just kind of hung back in the hallway? That's what I looked like. I was like, hey, what do they say? Should, should I get my sleeping bag? Now, everything that I've just told you is A, absolutely true, and B, not the worst part. So let's get there. <sighs> the mother saw me over her son's shoulder and she was like, you wanna sleep in my son's bed? Now, I want you to know, folks, I'm not happy or proud of the answer that I gave, okay? I was very nervous, didn't think I'd be in this situation. Because obviously, yeah, what I should have said was... No. no! Absolutely not! I don't want to sleep in your kid's bed. Teach this little fucker some boundaries before he wanders into some guy's Plymouth Voyager. What is your Wi-Fi password? That's what I should have said. But again, I was all flustered. So when she asked, you want to sleep in my son's bed? What I came back with was, lady, I just met this kid. <laughs> Yeah, which implies that I'd be cool with it if I got to know him better. <laughs> All right, isn't this our third date? Bunk up, motherfucker. Let's tell some ghost stories. <sighs> All right. I gotta get out of here in a second. I just want you guys to know that I don't like telling that story. <laughs> so, I tell it for one reason and one reason only, and that is, you know what, hey, comedy, it's going very well for me, all right? I am living my dream, I get to travel across the country, talk to cool places like this, I'm filming my second special, and I appreciate you all being a part of that, yeah! It's great! It's going well, it's going well. Hey, I might blow up one day, you may see me on television. Sure, yeah, okay. I just want you to know, that when that day comes, somewhere out of the woodwork, there's gonna be a family from Ohio. <laughs> Says I tried to me too their son or whatever. So listen, before you guys all leave, I, I, I just have to make sure I get one thing from you and that is your email addresses because when that day comes, I am gonna subpoena all of you. <laughs> to testify as character witnesses. All right, I gotta go, guys. Thank you very much. You were a lot of fun. Sarasota, Florida. Thank you so much. Pop Conyers, ladies and gentlemen.